Okay, so now let's talk about projectile motion and start. let's start looking at that angled initial velocity. I already said that it's important that we separate our horizontal and our vertical. So we're gonna talk now about how you go about doing that. Uh, I've got drawn here a cute little cannon uh, and this cannon is going to fire uh, a cannonball. Uh, it has a couple just waiting, uh, but it's gonna fire this can cannonball at some angle uh, theta and with some initial velocity v naught. Uh, so if, if it does that, we need to figure out how we can figure out what its initial horizontal velocity, we'll call that v in the x direction, and what its initial vertical velocity is, we'll call that v in the y direction. So I'm going to pull that aside to, uh, to the side a little bit and let's draw it as a triangle. A triangle that has a hypotenuse with length v naught. A, uh, a side that's adjacent to our angle, uh, that is our Vx, and a side that is opposite to our angle, that is Vy. So remember that Sokotoa thing that I was just talking about uh, at the very a few, you know, a week and a half ago uh, when we started school? Uh, that Sokotoa thing helps us figure out how we can write, figure out Vx and Vy given v naught and our thetas. Um, so let's write out the sine part. The definition of sine uh, of theta is equal to uh, our opposite over our hypotenuse. And I'm gonna write opposite in, uh, in red so we can see that it, it's, it's that angle there. Uh, and if we substitute in our variables, uh, then we find that uh, this would be vy uh, over v naught, v or v naught sine theta is equal to v y. So we already now we know how to solve for this. It's just v naught uh, sine theta. No, that's too small to even be useful. Oh well. Uh, then for the cosine uh, angle, co the definition of cosine. This is the ka. Cosine is ang uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine is equal to uh, this blue vector, our adjacent angle, that's this one here over the hypotenuse. So I can substitute in uh, Vx and v, v naught. Uh, and we've got there uh, right there. And then that leads us to the formula for Vx, which is V naught cosine theta. All right, take these two equations that I just showed you how to find and put them somewhere safe where you can study them every night before you go to bed. Uh, this is an important, uh, an important um, formula that gets used kind of all over the place uh, and you need to be really comfortable with it so that you know uh, what your first step is on a lot of these projectile motion problems. Um, it's even better if you can learn how to go from something like Sokotoa and this triangle to these angles. But if that's not gonna work for you, if that's a little bit too much right now, grab these things so you know how to always find Vx and always find Vy. And then when I'm tutoring you and I'm helping you, and I say, what's Vx? And you say, uh, I'll say, find your notes. And you'll find this in your notes. And you'll practice that until you know it off the top of your head on your own. Cool. Uh, so uh, now that we know what Vx and Vy are, let's learn a little bit about what they mean. So let's, uh, we have Vx there, or Vy there, Vx there. Uh, and I have some special names for each one of these. Vx, I'm going to be calling go upness for the rest of uh, today. Vx, I'm gonna call our go fastness. These are our technical terms. Uh, go upness is called that because it governs the height and airtime. So as we shift this angle upwards and more and more of our V naught turns into Vy or turns into go upness, we will spend more and more time in the air. Our go fastness is governing It's the distance that we'll travel 
given time. So Vx can't get us over unless it has time. If we're going 50 meters per second, but we only have one second, we're gonna travel 50 meters. If we are going 50 meters per second, but we have two seconds, well, now we get to go 100 uh, meters. So go fastness by itself, um, it, it helps get us a little bit further, but we need the time from our go upness in order to cover that distance. Um, so uh, this leads to a unifying uh, phrase, uh, which is go farness. That's an S. All right, so this is an official quote from Mr. Terrell. Go farness requires go fastness and go upness. And that's real physics from a real physics teacher. Uh, if you have both and you have a combination of both, you can go very far. But if you only have one, like if I only have go upness, I'm gonna go straight up in the air and I'm gonna come straight down and I'm not gonna move over even a little bit. If I have lots of go fastness, sure, I could go over really far, except I'm immediately hitting the ground and probably stopping relatively soon if we talk about like friction along the ground. But either way, my actual projectile motion time was zero because I instantly hit. If I have both of them and I have them in equal quantities, it turns out, in equal quantities, we will get our maximum distance over a uh, over level ground. So if we are on level ground, the ideal angle is 45 degrees. That will give us the furthest distance with any given velocity. And that changes depending on whether we're on level ground or not. If we go higher, uh, if we're launching from a low point to a higher point, uh, you should think about, and we'll do this in class, but think about whether you would want to increase the angle or decrease the angle. And if we're going, uh, going lower, like we're aiming downhill, or we're on the edge of a cliff, uh, um, and then um, uh, I want to say um, I want to say the F word, F I R E F I R I N G, but I don't use the F word in this class. So if we're Fing off of a cliff, then we have to be really, really, uh, then we, uh, we can probably change our angle either up or down as well and still go a little bit further depending on how we change. So think about on your own uh, if you're uh, Fing upwards or if you're Fing downwards, uh, how you want to change your angle in order to get the maximum distance. Um, the last thing that I want to just talk about is complementary angles. Uh, and with complementary angles, that's anything uh, like on a triangle uh, or anything that adds up to 90. So like 30 and 60 is a complementary set or 5 degrees and uh, 85 degrees is a complementary set, and any complementary set will actually have the same go farness. It'll achieve the same range because if you have, uh, if you adjust upwards, say at the 85 degree angle, you're going to have lots of time in the air, but you'll have so little go fastness, so little horizontal velocity, that even though you spend all that time in the air, you still impact relatively close to where you launch from. If you launch down at a five degree angle, I guess I should do it. At a five degree angle, you'll definitely go very fast horizontally, but you'll have so little air time because you have so such a small go upness that you'll hit the ground uh, too fast to really go very far. Uh, so that's why complementary angles on level ground actually uh, hit the same spot. The big difference is between the complementary angles though, is that higher angle will always have more go upness. So even though they go equally far, the, uh, the greater angle will go higher in the air and it will have more time of flight. Uh, 
Um, so that hits all of the big things. Let me double check, make sure I didn't miss anything on my handy dandy notes. I want you guys to know that before every class, before I do all of my lectures, I write out all my notes so I know that I'm saying all the things that I need to say. Um, and I think that hits everything. So this is the basics of projectile motion. And we'll start doing them from a mathematical approach, from a graphical approach, and, um, and uh, doing some example problems uh, next week. Thank you for watching.